Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Solar Titans from Sunnyside Up Games. Solar Titans is a 1-4 to four player deck building game which players are not only building out their deck, but they are also literally constructing and adjusting their spaceship as they try to take down each other in this, well, sometimes head-to-head, -head, sometimes team-based, sometimes solo play deck building game. This is a prototype, all rules and components subject to change, and I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. Past that, like I said already, this is a 1-4 to four player game, although I'd imagine the main mode is a head-to-head -head deck building game. You can play it as free-for-all, you can play it as teams, you can play it as head-to-head, -head, you can play it as solo, all those ways are possible uh, just based on the way the game works i would say a uh, solo i have not tried so i'm not sure about that but i'd say it's primarily going to be head to head uh, uh, team base could be interesting and free for all is going to run into the same problems you have in general free for all games of uh, star realms or dice throne and all that which is to say if you like free for all in those games i see no reason why it wouldn't work here and if you don't like free for all in those games i think you'll have the same experience here that's way too long spent on the player account. Let's tell you what you're actually doing in the game. This is a deck building experience. You're going to have a deck of cards, a standard hand of 10 cards, in which you're going to have uh, some basic economy cards you're using to buy various cards. You're going to have an ability card. You're going to have some arming cards, which is how you're going to fire in the game. All players are going to start with the same 10 card deck, and you're going to go ahead and draw five cards, and then figure out what you're doing with those five cards. In this case we have over here, we have three basic purchase cards, we have a crew coordinator which could be a fourth purchase or we can go ahead and spend money to trash cards in our hand. This can be an expensive way to trash cards because you have to give up three cards. You have to pay for it with one card, you have to use the card itself and you have to get rid of the third card in your hand so it's expensive but it can be worthwhile. And then lastly you have this arming card. Arming is going to be how you fire your ship. You see you have weapons on your ship, more specifically you have over here this alpha laser on your ship, but you need an arm card to be able to actually fire the weapon. You can use the arm card now or you can save it for future turns. That's relevant because weapons cannot fire more than one time per weapon per turn and also strategically you may want to wait for the right situation. In this case, let's go ahead, let's uh, play our cards, let's use our arm, let's fire our weapon, we're going to fire our weapon, and we're going to pick one of the lanes of our enemy spaceship to go ahead and fire at, and right now we do want to kind of make our, want to make our way down the center to be able to take out the ship, but we might be able to take out the alpha laser fast, so let's go ahead and try to shoot this, we're going to shoot that light plate, that's a one defense, all the starting army ships is one defense, and our one attack can go out and take this one defense and it's going to take out that alpha laser, leaving him on the defensive. His alpha laser is now exposed because our next shot can actually hit him straight on and take out his laser. Meanwhile, we'll take our four money over here, we'll look at the market, and let's go ahead and grab a crew augmenter. I love cards let you discard and draw more cards, or more specifically draw, and this has that, and there you go, that's turn one of the game. We'll have the enemy go ahead and do a turn, and then we'll just walk you through how things play out. We should also go ahead and draw a new card from the deck, and let's go ahead and play this card over here we have a similar situation, but 5 money to spend this time. That means we can go ahead and grab a Styx Missile, which is going to go into our discard pile, and when it comes around, we can go ahead and put that into our into our ship. But from there, we're also going to spend one of our field repairs over here, because we know that in his next hand, he's going to be able to draw his second arm, which means he's going to fire again. So we're going to use our field repair, we have 5 of these, and we're going to go ahead and repair our ship so that we don't have to worry about having our alpha laser destroyed. That's a typical back and forth in the game. Obviously, this is early game, so there's a whole lot of things you haven't seen yet. So let's talk about some of those things. First of all, we're going to have our standard marker cards. That's our hauling crew and our mercenary crew. Hauling crew is worth two money, but you can also use it to move ship cards. So for example, the next time to destroy that laser over there, we can go ahead and move our alpha laser instead. So you get a little more flexibility as far as how you can react if you use those, but you have to trash it to do so. Over here, our mercenary crew, you can trash that to scrap to fire a ship weapon, or you can prep for future turns, but that allows you to get more fires in. Otherwise, you only have two fires on your whole entire deck and as your deck grows it's going to be harder to actually ensure you're constantly firing your weapons so grabbing mercenary crew is a way to ensure that you are constantly on the offensive we also have additional things we drag we grab that sticks missile once that comes back into play our sticks missile if it's in the deck over here and we can ha we're going to have a maximum of 15 cards in your area but a five by five grid so you can choose how to build out your ship but it's limited to 15 cards and a five by five although you can discard scrapped cards at any time these over here you can discard these to make way for new cards and this card over here this fires from the sides so it's a single attack but when we fire our six missile over here we can go ahead and ignore the front things immediately taking out their targeting bay force them to spend two our cards to arm the weapons every single turn or alternatively eventually hitting their uh, crew quarters which means they're going to have to discard two cards a turn and eventually the way you win the game is you take out their command deck taking out the command deck's a little harder though because that's a two strength uh, so that's a two strength item over here and all these side shootings th items these missiles over here those are only ever one strength so you have to get something a bit more 
more offensive because you might be sitting there wondering, well, then just get a Sidewinder missile over there. It's not called the Sidewinder missile, a Styx missile. You might be saying you just get one of those and the game's over. No, you'll have definitely some, definitely some control over your over your actions once you get it, but you have to take down their crew quarters over there, the command deck, and the command deck just takes a lot more effort to actually take down. Past that, the center bay is going to have a lot of things. We have our scythe beam that's going to fire in two columns at once. So you can go ahead and fire this and trigger two columns at once when you do so, which can be, again, a great way to get on the offensive, except for the fact that you can also go ahead and buy nanoplate, which is going to go ahead and you can use nanoplate. You can discard that and place nanoplate there, and that's going to be a two defense card over there. You're going to have additional cards in this deck, uh, ability cards, salvage crew. You're going to have, you know, again, more nanoplate. You're going to have a boost laser where you can spend three in order to make it a stronger strength two weapon. We're going to have a deck crane, which give you a money every single turn we have a mining laser a link laser a six missile a boost laser auto cannons uh, if armed arms all other attached auto cannons that could be a very strong way of getting multiple cannons shot out we have a the dino plate which is a three strength over there but can't be repaired you're going to go through the deck and have lots of these cards that ultimately change how you build out your engine but the general sequence is the same you draw a hand of five cards you use your economy to buy more cards you sit there and arm your weapons to slowly take down your opponent's ship trying to slowly ping through their armor and eventually hit their command deck or alternatively just to able them along the way. Meanwhile, players are trying to buy hauling crew to improve their spending power because you need those to improve your spending power. You're going to be buying mercenary crew to keep your opponent on their toes and constantly defensive. You're going to be adding cards that can enter your discard and then filter back into the hand. You're going to be adding those cards into your ship so you can try to pre prep and adjust and react to how and what your opponent is doing as they try to take you down. And that's basically what's happening in Solo Titans. Again, there's a few modes to play. There's going to be a solo mode, which gives a, a kind of a enemy AI its own ship structure and way it operates. There's a one versus many mode. There's a team mode. There's a head-to-head. -head. There's all these different modes. Although, again, I think that if you've played other games in this style of gameplay, you're going to want to take those other modes with a grain of salt as far as which ones will or won't work for you. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. Just uh, walk in understanding that. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the review, starting off with ease of play. Ease of play on this one is pretty simple. It's a standard deck-building game for the most part. The things that are different are going to be the, the way this whole shape spaceship area operates and if you're wondering why the different spaceships you're going to start with different shapes of spaceships and then from there you can adjust and modify it as you will and you will have a reason to do so you're going to be constantly spending your five repair cards over here each player is going to start with five field repairs those are important because the 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 sequencing of the game is such that you'll be taking slow pot shots on your opponent one shot at a time early game, and until you can actually build up your defenses, you'll find yourself rapidly going through a bunch of those field repairs until you can get your ship to a point where you can actually have the economy and the cards and everything you need to actually stop your opponent just pinging through your light plate armor in the game. But overall, the game plays fairly quickly, 30 to 45 minutes, usually closer to 30 minutes, uh, teaches fairly quickly, and it's easy to get people up and running. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking, starting off with what I like, First of all, the end game can really shift back and forth. And I'd say more than that, there's a lot of variety to the ways you can approach the game. I play this game a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different times in terms of the way you're trying to put pressure on your opponent. And I've really enjoyed my favorite game by far was one where one person was heavily going for mercenary crew and leveling up as much as possible in terms of just being able to drive pot shot after pot shot after pot shot at your opponent. Every single turn, there was a one hit, wit, one hit shot coming your way, slowly pinging through the light plate. Meanwhile, the other player was building up their economy the entire time, and they were slowly working their way towards the back and forth where they can actually take the edge, and the whole game went back and forth the entire time with different play styles, until eventually the more offensive player won, but literally by a hair's breadth, they came back and forth to how each player gaining an advantage and readjusting the ship, moving cards around, constantly replacing things that were destroyed. The game can have a lot of back and forth. It starts off as a just like slowly taking down each other's plate armor, but then from there, as you can actually build up an engine and a deck that works for you, it really gets a lot stronger and a lot more uh, dancing trying to work within your own engine and your own cards to accomplish what you need while you take down your opponents there's a strong economy there's a strong balance between the economy versus rushing the end game and there's lots of variety to the cards in terms of ways they'll support that whether the stronger cards more armor whether you have this boarding pot over here this yeah, yeah, it preps your opponents so you place it right down but then you can take any one of the side areas kind of similar to having a sticks missile there's the actual sticks missiles which can slowly take out your opponent from the left and the right but yes you can also build and react to that there's a back and forth at play again i primarily at a two-player mode over here but there's a back and forth at play as far as how each player dances around the other and tries to build react and adjust to what your opponent is doing in a fairly standard deck builder that takes the the 3d element of building outer spaceship and incorporates that into that head-to-head -head game as far as what i don't like 
few small things over here. First of all, it is a slow build. Like I said already, the game kind of gives you these repair cards, which are necessary because the early game, there's not much to do other than take the pot shots. And I assume this is a playtesting thing that eventually they kind of figure out the solution to this back and forth was giving players these over here. And it works well, but it also means that the early game is a slow back and forth. The early game is, hey, go ahead and take a pot shot. I'll take a pot shot. You do this. And I slowly build up your deck. And I'd say that of the 30 to 45 minute game, the first 10 minutes feels kind of like a procedural rehashing every single time because of how much it is about building out your spaceship that you don't start with enough. I almost wish the game gave you some sort of currency or economy towards an early game draw, early game buy or something that would take out those 10 minutes of potentially avoid the need for having these or have fewer of these. Uh, as it stands, the early game is very similar game to game and mostly comes down to, again, any deck builder has a certain amount of that, but I'd say particularly in this one, it very much feels like just slowly depleting the light plate armor while you use your reserve field repairs to recover from that. That's the way every one of, my, one of my early games has played out, and so I wish there was a way to skip that. I'll also say the end can also, some games, not all games, some games the end can be tedious. If you have a close enough game, it can finally move down to being a war of attrition towards the end, where I take down your weapon and I'm discarding cards every single turn. You take down my, uh, my uh, targeting bay and now I have to spend two cards to arm every single turn. Yes, there's a degree of the early game is a little bit slow to build up, the middle game is a lot of reacting and adjusting, and the end game can have you crippling each other to the point that you have a harder time actually getting things done than having the opponent cripple you, and you're both hurting each other so much that it can slow down as well. Which again, it's a weird arc. It's like a slow start, a very strong middle and then a slower end sometimes again that key part is end game is always the, the early game has always been slow for me versus the end game is situational and it is a bit more game to game I'll also say that many cards that you buy very often can be one-time use. You'll buy a card, you'll put it into your thing, and then you'll just discard it so you don't take a damage. Or you'll immediately discard it and flip it so you can deal an extra pot shot. I find building cards into your engine that are one-time use just feels less satisfying, even though tactically, they can be very sound. Tactically, tactfully speaking, tactfully, tact, tactically speaking, boosting a laser to the right level one time is possibly what you need to break through, but it also feels a bit anticlimactic to be buying cards that you pulled into your ship. You buy a card, you put it into your discard card, it comes back around, it goes into your hand, it goes into your ship, and then boom, you use it. It can feel a bit anticlimactic, even when it is tactically sound. As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, side damage in this game is annoying. You have to be able to build and prep and react and adjust to that happening. But having missiles coming in from the side, having invasion boarding pods coming from the side and take out your areas here, you can't defend on all sides all at once, and it's a good thing you can't, or the game would never move forward. But it can be annoying to sit there and I'm trying to build up an engine and you're just like, boom, I kill out your crew quarters and now you're discarding two cards a turn. Hope you enjoy that. Have fun. Enjoy the game. Bye. It can be annoying to deal with the side damage. It can be a way that it kind of, there's less room to prep and you have to be able to react to it more. Yes, you still have your field repair cards, but if they have an early game sticks missile, which by the way is hard to get, that immediate five card hand where you just get five that five right away off the bat, that's a good hand and it gives and the fact that the sticks missile is out there is a good thing. But again, it means that this player is going to be slightly more on the offensive for the next few turns, being able to prep multiple side shots and this player is going to have to react to that. This player right now in this board state with what just happened is going to have a slightly less fun first few turns as they keep spending time trying to repair their things. And even though you could repair, that happens at the end of your turn, so you still have to react to the negative things along the way. Side damage is important in this game, but it can also be frustrating as you go through it. As far as final thoughts of Solar Titans, Solar Titans has a lot of things that are really enjoyable. And it, it works on a familiar formula. The standard deck building game, if you've played any deck building game, this is going to feel familiar to it. And it innovates in some areas by primarily having these spaceships here. This is the main source of innovation in which it's different. Uh, the rest of it all just comes down to stats and numbers and no different than any deck building game. What does this do differently? It does these spaceships differently. It gives you a physical spaceship you're dealing with and building and reacting to. And there are many elements of it that I do enjoy. I, I do like that back and forth and the different ways you can push and pull your engine, the different ways you can build out your spaceships to work for you. There's a lot of fun things going on over here. The main things that do hold it back for me, again, are that consistently slow start, the sometimes slow end, and the fact that many cards are one-time use, and then again, as what I can see others not liking as well, that those side shots are all important, can we lead to games where one player doesn't have as good of a time as another, depending on how things were built out. Overall, it's a good game. It's just not necessarily... Over, overall, it's a good game. I've enjoyed my time with it while having critiques of it at the same time. For me, this is a 3.5 out of 5. There's a lot of very cool things going on here, while also relying on tried and true mechanics that have worked for the most part and trying to find their space and ways to innovate within. A 3.5 out of 5.
As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Star Realms. First of all, Star Realms. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, Star Realms is a fantastic two-player head-to-head game, also set in space, much more with the, st the standard card play than anything else. It all comes down to the abilities, less of a building up a spaceship, but Star Realms is popular and popular for a reason. And if you're looking for something with more of a, uh, a placement puzzle going on to it, Summoner War is a game I actually haven't played. I'm not entirely sure. I played it once a very, very long time ago, but a game I mean to be diving into the second edition to eventually give that a shot, but Summoner Wars will have far more of a tactical placement puzzle in a two-player head-to-head experience. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.